So, um, so we're going on to our penultimate in this session now. So we've got Valentina Abby Osman and we're talking about embedding hidden histories and creating medical educators of the future. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Are we, are we... Yeah. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Van Kolu. Uh, this is my colleague Valentina. We're both final year medical students. And we're here today to talk to you about embedding hidden histories and creating the medical educators of the future. Uh, next slide, please. So to give context to this presentation, uh, we first presented uh, the work done co-creating an exhibition that celebrated the Windrush generation's contribution to the NHS at the second DEMA conference. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, the importance of the work was self-evident and was reinforced by feedback which showed how important it was to students and the legacy of the work has been manifold and resulted in projects tackling racism and discrimination within our curriculum. Next slide, please. Often our interaction with black and minority ethnic people within our learning and material um, is problematic, reductive and stereotypical. In reviewing PBR content, we sought to address the lack of strong black female role models as were in the Windrush generation. This led us push, um, to push to embed Mind the Gap, as Malone mentioned earlier, brought into discussion the lack of medical descriptors available for black patients and um, celebrated the Windrush generation as well. Next slide, please. We created and delivered this PowerPoint to embed migration history and challenge myths around migrants. The whole process from creating the PowerPoint to teaching medical students made us feel more confident as teachers and have greater understanding on how to make teaching material for Canvas. Next slide, please. We partnered with staff in the library and with our peer, Adrian Crawford, now a doctor, um, applying for funding to archive all photographs of nurses who came over to support the NHS. This is so that all students can celebrate their heritage, but also we want to share these stories with the community. Next slide, please. Um, despite the work done and the increasing involvement of individuals and some staff, without meaningful support from institutions, last and change could be quite hard to achieve. Um, for example, institutional review of policies that we've heard at times today, uh, tackling racism and discrimination being driven by open letters written by students. Um, university seems still to lack urgency in pursuing change and are often relying on the contribution from staff and students. Next slide, please. In order to have meaningful change to create anti-racist universities, work needs to be done with black students as equal partners to create medical educators who can be the role models for the future. Institutions need to, need to be a place where individuals feel respected and represented. Curriculums need to teach students to serve marginalized communities and students to be inspired to teach the generations of the future. Being able to learn how to create teaching material and learn to teach has meant that we are committed to affecting change in medical education of the future. Thank you for listening. Excellent timing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm sure that everybody would agree that was an extremely articulate uh, presentation. I think your takeaway points really rang true. Um, do we have any questions from the team? <clears throat> I'd be interested in how it felt being educators and how you felt sort of taking on that 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 role. Um, is it something that you'd recommend? Is it something that you see get yourselves going into? Um, I mean, yeah, for sure. I think it's definitely cemented um, the need and what the want to become medical educators, just because I feel like it has really changed um, the prospect of our careers and what what we can bring. In order uh, for future generations, essentially. Yeah, and it's having having that um, the representation in those rooms oftentimes makes a world of difference. Just for the kind of decisions that come out of those rooms, and I think at multiple different times in my life, kind of growing up and going through education, I, I definitely would have appreciated having um, a role model uh, to look up to in that regard. Um, not that others can't do it, but there's there's not, just different levels of relatability and familiarity that come with different um, kind of identities and I think it's important um, just as we've heard from 
there being queer representation and, and trans representation, there being, you know, black and minority ethnic representation as well. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so a couple of questions in the chat, and I know that Shamik's also raised his hand, so I'll go through the chat first. So is the archiving resource a public resource? Um, so it's, it's still a work in progress. I think the, I think as we, again, as we heard multiple times today, there can be quite a few barriers to some of these things being brought in and put in place. Um, so I think we're, we're still actually pushing in terms of applying um, for that funding to, to do that. Um, I think the idea was that it would be a public resource though, because uh, um, we, we, of the archives we actually tapped into were from a, uh, uh, Lambeth um, Arco, so it was a local resource in, in the first place. So it'd definitely be something we'd try and disseminate. Wow, that's great. We will watch the space. Um, and we also have a question asking about whether you included other health belief models and how you could integrate those with the Eurocentric model. So I think, I think that's actually, so I, I did, sorry, a little story time. So I did a, a module when I, um, before, when I did my previous degree, I was looking at um, global health and different health belief systems. Um, at the moment, it's, it's still kind of on that basis, and I think Matt's kind of spoke to it, like kind of influencing any of these things. They kind of want to see it be tested for a while before they kind of expand upon it. So if you imagine that we've only just now really started to talk about the contributions of the winner generation to the NHS, which was very pivotal and vital, mm -hmm. um, to then kind of expand that to talking about different health belief models around the world is, is, is quite, I, mean, I agree, like it should be something that we should like consider and take into account, especially when you talk into like respecting patients' cultures and yeah, beliefs exactly. and decision making. But I think it's something that that will take time and that will definitely take something that's a coordinated thing across institutions as well. Great, thank you. Um, I think Shanak had a question, then I'll come to Sophia's question in the chat. So sorry, I thought it'd be quicker than, and then typing it out. Uh, thanks, guys. Excellent presentation. Just um, on the flip side, so you mentioned that it was inspiring uh, as, as for you guys as medical educators. On the flip side to that, I'm not kind of obvious, um, um, i.e. not having representation, not having role models. Are there any things that you guys, that you guys have come across as students that have been demotivating for you as educators? Um, I think just the struggle to almost get to the position that we got to. I think we were really lucky to um, have Margot um, at our university um, who really did help us a lot um, and gave us loads of opportunities to be able to do what we're doing now, for example. Mm. But um, for many students who don't have those connections um, and who do have inspiring stories or do have things that they do want to um, talk about, it's, it's not, it's not the same um so i guess just having that ability to just make it easier for students to be able to get into medical education mm -hmm. would be really important <clears throat> and that i guess would, would be the point that i'm making in terms of why it's a bit frustrating yeah uh, i think i think uh, as again i think we've heard repeatedly and it's quite it's quite sad actually how, how repeated it's been throughout the day so far yeah. um that we've heard a lot about how once you get into kind of those spaces where those decisions are made and and um things are discussed how hard it is to get things you, you'd imagine would be quite a simple entry point for discussion like oh racism is wrong in these in these spaces because it's where it's, it takes quite a while to even to get to that point so i guess i guess how much energy it takes to to kind of get to that footing, I think, has been quite, yeah, I would say it's been quite demotivating. And I think that's why things like this and having kind of a uh, outward perspective for things like this, so you're actually kind of putting pressure on where it needs to be put um, to get things changed and to get, um, to get the balance shifted where it needs to be shifted. And just one more point, sorry. Um, I think what was also mentioned today was a lot um, about burnout. So I guess also having that balance between um, doing like these things like teaching, but at the same time, thinking about your own mental health and how you're doing within yourself. Um, but yeah. 
Thank you for those really thoughtful answers. Um, and certainly it touched on some of the stuff that we were talking about in Rini's workshop about how small numbers of very enthusiastic, passionate people carry a lot. And that that puts quite a lot of pressure on you. Um, and that, that creates a lot of inequity actually then that, that, that's arguably perpetuating the problem. But um, thank you again for your articulate um, um, answers and you know I, I'm aware of time and, and I know that I haven't got to Sophia's question if you have a, have a look at the, the question in the chat and if you've got any responses please please do um, add in it's a big question so it might be something that we could also look to chatting more about in the network session later on thank you so, thank you thank you very very much